My God, it's full of stars. Let's take a look at uh, one of the um, newer threads. It's not super new, but it's a newer thread that I um, am fleshing out still. And it begins with uh, Tang, the drink that the astronauts didn't take to the moon. And throughout this whole puzzle, um, we've been using palindromes and mirroring and jabberwocky. So if we, if we mirror Tang, we get Nat. And it's an insect. So this is a list of all the insects so far. So Tang, the drink the astronauts took to the moon. Um, and uh, you have Animal Mother. He says, uh, if I'm going to get my ass blown off, my word is Poon Tang. So that's, this is the category of um, the bush baby, the sea hare rock, the muffly merkin, the playboy bunnies, the cat lady in the room, and all the paintings in the room have um, women naked bending over with their with their bushes sticking out and then we have the line from Lee Ermey and he says if there was some pussy up there you could clear that obstacle couldn't you pile so he's, he's sprinkled poontang in his puzzle um, to make it easier to uh, you know because we're using the archetypes you know so one of the um, archetypes is Ann Margaret she's Queen of Vegas and she's also a Playboy Bunny and uh, so that, you know, ties into, this is one of her threads, Playboy, Playboy Bunnies. Also, you have Azizi Joe Harry and Gloria Hendry. They're the two Playboy Bunnies that are on Scatman's wall. They're mirrored. So anytime it's mirrored, it, you have to look at it closer. So it's Poontang is a thread. It's the pussy thread. Then we have Tang, the drink the astronauts uh, brought to the moon. This is made fun of in uh, the Coneheads. And uh, they go, astronauts to the moon. <laughs> then we have the banana spider and 12 monkeys. Uh, Bruce Willis actually eats it. And, um, you know, this is the whole, this man is bananas. In the movie, Brad Pitt yells at uh, Bruce Willis and he tells him, this man is bananas. So it's another expression for your crazy, your nutty, your fruity, your bananas, your cuckoo, your loony tunes. So we're still on insects. So we have the gnat. We have the banana spider. We have the Bugs Bunny. So his first name is Bugs. And also there's another one here I forgot to put in. You had Vincent Bugliosi. And uh, he is the, <clears throat> he's the lead um, for Kubrick's uncle, who goes to prison for killing some people. And he also is the prosecutor for Kennedy. And his nickname is Bugs. You know, Kabugliosi Bugs makes sense, obviously. So he was he was on um, with Jesse Ventura once, and uh, he freaked right out when he when Jesse started asking him some questions. He's just like, "Turn the mic off! Turn it! Turn it off!" So Vincent knows what's going on. Bugs, I should say, knows. You know, he knows too much. And it was interesting watching him shit his pants though when they when, you know when they started putting him on the hot seat. And then, of course, we have Buzz Aldrin. Buzz is something that a bee does and a hornet does. And, uh, you know, it's, an, it's a nesting uh, insect. It makes a nest. And then you couple the, couple the buzz 
with Buzz Aldrin and you find out Aldrin is actually a banned uh, insecticide and it was uh, affecting animals and people so they had to ban it. So his first name is a banned or his last name is a banned pesticide and his first name is Buzz you know so and they land on the H the USS Hornet you know so so we have Buzz B and then we have Buzz you can get buzzed on moonshine Buzz is a nickname for a buzzard bird. So notice how his name, it's, um, we have an insect, Buzz. We have Aldrin, a pest, an insecticide. We have um, Buzz as in a bee, uh, Buzz on moonshine, and Buzz is a nickname for a buzz. You know, so his name Buzz, ostensibly, I think you're supposed to um, assume that he was named after a buzzard. You know, because he's a he's a flying ace. You know, oh, that's another one I forgot to put in here. So he's a flying ace, just like the Snoopy and Charlie Brown capsule. Well, Snoopy was a flying ace, and he would he would routinely have air battles with the uh, Red Baron. So he's a flying ace. Buzz is a nickname for a buzzard, which is a a bird. So we have a you know the, all these are tying right into the categories we already have the bird. We have the moonshine, the moonshots, the Jack Daniels, the Michael Collins, the insect category, which we're going over right now. And then, of course, buzz ties right into the buzz saw category. So you have the buzz saw, you have the Ridley Scott saw blade runner, you have Elliot C., the Apollo astronaut that dies, so you have Seesaw. Um, and Seesaw is a, is a reference to, the, you never see any curvature, you know. It should be like a seesaw, but it isn't. You never see curvature. It's flat. Then you have the chainsaws. This is the chain smoking and the anything that happens in repetition, you know, a chain link. So on the moon, you have chain crater and link crater. So we have the chainsaw. So, you know, then we have the bandsaw. This would be all the bands that are in this puzzle. The Beatles, Nazareth, the Alan Parsons Project. Um, the band Kansas, you know, they have the album with the ship sailing off the, the edge of the earth and, uh, you know, the whole album is about, it's about flat earth. Um, and you have the needle saw. This is our needles category. Uh, the one-eyed jack needle. Uh, the crazy diamond saw. The magic circle saw. And then we jump into another movie. We go to Star Wars and you have the lightsaber saw. And uh, another movie, Blade, with Wesley Snipes. So you have Saw Blade. So Aldrin is, you know, he ties into, I don't know how many categories now. That's got to be like seven or eight. Then we have Flea from Back to the Future. He plays Douglas. Um, uh, what is it? He did, oh, I'm sorry. He plays Douglas Needles in the movie. <clears throat> so we already de determined before there's a whole category of woods and trees. So... Douglas fir is a type of tree, and it has needles. So you have Douglas fir needles, and uh, this is a clues to eugenics again. Um, you know, just like we had. Um, where was it up here? That was another one. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention too is um, Bird writes his book alone. You know, and I, I mentioned before that it has one in it, which is obvious, but. What isn't so obvious is if you reverse it, it becomes Enola. So the Enola Gay was the name of the ship that, or the uh, name of the plane that dropped the bomb. So though I find that very strange, with all the references to atomic weapons, and we find out that Bird's book mirrors Enola. And um, when we go to Austin, so we had Flea. This you know, space may be the final frontier, but it's made in the Hollywood basement, and he's a musician just like. Uh, Apollo, the musician, and he's noted to be a little crazy, you know, so he would be like the craziest member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers with his um, explosive personality. Then we have Austin Powers, and he uses the term, wait a tick. So this is a reference to time, and it's a reference to, you know, the tick-borne diseases that the... Um, that the U.S. military developed and released into the population. Then we go to Twins Peaks, <clears throat> and we have um, 
Then we go to Twin Peaks and we have the wood tick. And uh, this is the wood tick that gets killed by the bullet. And um, this series is just ridiculous. There's so many things in it. Uh, then we go to the movie The Shining, and we have the butterfly diorama that we see in the in the Torrance's uh, bedroom, mirrored in the in the mirror. Um, then we have boxing great Muhammad Ali, with his famous saying, "Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee." So we have the butterfly and the bee, and we have a mode of transportation fly. Then we have the Tiffany Monarch Lamp in Eyes Wide Shut. So a, a Tiffany is, is a jeweler, and it's a monarch mind control lamp. And also, he says um, in Full Metal Jacket, Lee Ermey says, Pyle, you better start shitting me t Tiffany Cutlinks. So Tiffany is mentioned, and jewelers is a thread. So you have jewelry, you have the Longines chronoscope, the Longines watch, the Timer X with a white metal wristlet, the Cuckoo Clock. You know, I didn't put them all in here. This Cuckoo Clock, Work Orange. You have the Atomic Clock. You have the Clock Tower. You have Saturn, God of Time, um, who eats all his children. He's a, he's a cannibal. You have, and then you have the Crazy Diamond, the Gold Room, um, Sterling Hayden, Apollo, and his silver bow and arrows, and his golden chariot. So when you go to the Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun, um, at one point in the movie, um, Christopher Lee escapes in his jet-powered flying golden matador. You know, it's just it's so... And the beauty of it, too, is the, the, the actual car he's driving was designed by El Oleg Cassini. And Oleg Cassini just happens to be Jackie O's fashion designer. So Jackie O's fashion designer designs the golden matador that Mr. Vampire Christopher Lee flies out in his jet-powered flying car that's golden. You know, it's just perfect. It really is. So this would be, you know, um, Apollo's golden chariot and his silver bow. And uh, you have also the in the horse puzzle you have um, Silver the horse, and we have Jack Ruby and the Emerald Emerald City and the Ruby slippers uh, somewhere over the rainbow, the Jade Rabbit, the Blue Marble. This one's interesting. We also have Tiffany Case is the name of um, Jill St. John. She's one of the Johnnies, by the way. So you have Jill St. John. So St. John is another biblical um, reference and it's to Johnny. So Jill St. John plays Tiffany Case. You know, another another clue into this jewelry. And um, what else? So on the moon you have Chain Crater and Link Crater. And we're chain linking these Tiffany and these jewel. In, in Full Metal Jacket, I can't think of the name, or in uh, Eyes Wide Shut, there's a jewelry store. I'll have to... I don't, I don't know what the name of it is right now, but this is a jewelry store. <clears throat> so he's hidden all these things associated with jewelry, stones and gold and silver and diamonds. And, you know, some of these are monolithic. Some are metals. Some are, you know, some are watches. Some are necklaces. Then we have a B. We have Lucille Ball, who is the person that makes Star Trek happen. She's the creator, essentially, of Star Trek. She was the one that pushed it through. They did not want to produce the show. And uh, Desilu Productions, which is essentially L Lucille Ball, who is a faux redhead. She's not a real redhead, by the way. And uh, so she, her, her last name is The Ball. And, of course, we have the baseball players and the football players and the tennis players and the ping pong and the golf and the snowball and the speedball and the eight ball and the croquet and it goes on and on. The globe, you're always on top of the... Oh, another one I, I, would, I loved. To, this one was good. When you're on a globe, no matter where you are standing on the globe, you're on top of it because you're at the highest point. Everywhere around you drops off because it's a ball. So you have the Imagine Dragons song, and the name of the song is I'm on top of the world. <laughs> so, you know, hello, McFly. If you're on top of the world, you're on top of the ball. You know, it's, it's a little joke. And uh, this goes right into... Um, John Lennon, and he, and he says, uh, you're no longer, you know, in the song... 
I'm just watching the wheels go round and round. And he goes, you're no longer, you're no longer on the ball. You know, so he's, he realizes he wasn't on the ball anymore. So we're not on top of the world because we're not on a ball. And of course, the Imagine Dragons video itself is just loaded with Kubricki and breadcrumbs from the beginning to the end. Um, I should do a video on this. Uh, Marie Windsor, she's another Kubrick uh, actress. She is in the movie The Killing. She's the one that's cuckolding her husband. So this is one of the cuckold, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo clues. And uh, her her nickname was, of course, the Queen of the Bees. The same exact thing as um, Lucille Ball, but they don't put the E after it. It's just the letter Bs. And this is because she was all in lots of um, really great film noir uh, creations, including Kubrick's The Killing, which was a really good movie. Then we have the USS Hornet as the Apollo 11 splashdown ship. And they call it the Hornet plus three because there's now three extra astronauts aboard. And this is Tricky Dick. He says, I'm the luckiest man in the world. And that's mirrored by Lou Gehrig, the luckiest man in the world. And uh, Lou Gehrig's nickname was Iron Horse, which is a train. You know, So we're, we're always looking for tracked vehicles. <clears throat> you know, you have the snow track. And you have the snowmobile in the book. And you have the Tucker snowcat um, that Vivian Fuchs and uh, the Timberline Lodge used. <laughs> you know, you gotta love that. So Vivian Fuchs was a, was a Tucker snowcat purveyor, owner, you know, or whatever. And the Timberline Lodge was also. Wow, that was an interesting spelling there. And the Timberline Lodge Look Magazine Pictorial, we see the Tucker Snowcat. So it's a track vehicle. And of course, the last track vehicle <coughs> would be the NASA Crawler, the largest um, four track vehicle ever. And notice the, the NASA Crawler is it can independently turn its front two tracks and it's rear two tracks so it's like a snake and also it's four tracked and it's the largest so another very famous four tracked snow vehicle is the Tucker Snowcat it's kind of unique that it has four tracks most of these others like the snow track itself that's a two track this is a one track this is a two this is a four track so you got one two four and of course, it's association with the first trans-Antarctic crossing in the Tucker Snowcat. And the, we get the Snowcat because uh, Barry Nelson says uh, he calls it a Snowcat twice. And it's not a Snowcat. It's a snow track in the movie. And he refers to it as a Snowcat. A Snowcat has four tracks. Um, then we have the Death's Head Moth and Silence of the Lambs. So we have all our clues. The Hopkins, you know, he's Tony Hopkins. He wears a mask in the movie, you know, and he mentions the fava beans, the magic fava beans. And we have references to cannibalism in the movie, and uh, these would be tying into the Donner Party story in The Shining. Saturn, the god of time who eats all his children. Um, Stephen King mentions the alive airplane crash of the soccer team in, in his book. Um, in Full Metal Jacket, we have uh, Lee Ermey says, uh, I will motivate you, pal, if it short dicks every cannibal on the Congo. So we have another reference to cannibalism. Um, so this re recurring theme of cannibalism isn't going away. It's being repeated over and over and over. And uh, in the movie Death, uh, Silence of the Lambs, you have Buffalo Bill. So this is a reference you know, to, to Fall and Paul. And then you have Agent Starling, which is a bird. I mean, it's ridiculous how you're following the, the exact same language. And then we have the hidden Salvador Dali painting that is in the movie poster itself on the back of the Death's Head Moss. So we, we're tying um, the Dali is how he referred to himself. He was, you know, an impressionist or a, um, oh, what is it? I can't even think of it. Um... 
and uh, what else was the other? Oh, so yeah, so the guy that's the murdering, you know, the the cannibalist dude, he's also taking the skins of the dead girls and he's sewing them together. He's a, he's a seamstress or a, a quilty or a weaver. So this is an interesting movie. You know, it has too many of these to be um, random. And of course, we're looking at the insects. So this is the death's head moth. Then we have the caterpillar. Um, Denny Lloyd, when he's playing with his little trucks and stuff, he has a model of a caterpillar bulldozer. So we're, we already know we're looking for Lewis Carroll clues. So when you find caterpillar, you immediately comes the caterpillar and the walrus. And um, the walrus was Paul. So, and then we have, uh, here's another thing about Lennon. So you had Johnny Lennon, one of the Beatles, okay? And this is all things Jack. So if you have Johnny Lennon, you're going to have Johnny Lemon, and he's another comedian. And uh, this is a, a connection to Gus Grissom's Lemon. You know, all these things are woven together. So Johnny Lennon has a child, and uh, his name is Julian. So this is the calendar that predates the Gregorian calendar the one that Christopher Clavius creates. So this Julian name is used by a lot of people who figure the Flat Earth puzzle out because it's so clever. So you have Julian Huxley. You have Julian is David Prowse's character's name in Clockwork Orange, the bodybuilder, the pro bodybuilder. And uh, Julian gets to the point in his bodybuilding career where he had to make the choice as to whether he wanted to use needles and anabolic steroids to keep going or if he was going to continue to do it um, naturally without using all the uh, chemicals and hormones. So he decides not to go with the needle. And then we have McFly, back to the hello, McFly, back to the future and all the clues into the CRM 114 on his amplifier, the flat earth clock, um, you know, there's a lot more here. I've gone through a lot of this stuff before. Um, Spider and Gumdrop were the two names for the Apollo craft. And obviously Spider was the Lem because it looks more like a spider. So the Apollo 11 uh, Lem nickname was Spider. And uh, we know we're using nicknames because in Full Metal Jacket, everyone gets a nickname. You have Joker, 8-Ball, hand job, you know, animal mother, blah, 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 Doc J. And then it, it translates out of that movie as well. We have the Yankee Clipper CSM. This is Joe DiMaggio's nickname. And his also, his other nickname is Mr. Coffee. Then we, ha we have a, a list of detectives in all things uh, Jack. <clears throat> one of the detectives we find, one of the famous TV or movie or um, book detectives that we find is Jack Webb and um, so he has webbed feet or you know he has, he has Webb in his name anyway so some of the other detectives that we've been given is Mickey, Supl Mickey Spillane, Mike Hammer we have Sherlock Crater on the, on the moon so that's Sherlock Holmes we have Frank Bullitt he drives the 280 uh, he drives the um, the Mustang and Bullitt so we already have a, remember we already have a magic bullet with Kennedy's murder. So Frank Bullet is a detective. These are all fictional detectives. We have Columbo uh, Columbo crater on the moon, a reference to um, Cristobal Columbo, who we all know as Christopher Columbus, and also the TV detective Columbo. He was one-eyed. And his name is Peter, so he's a double one-eyed Jack. You know, his name is a Peter, which is a one-eyed. Which, like, if his name was Dick, that would be the same thing. He would be one-eyed. <clears throat> and in real life, he has one eye. So, um, and he's in All Things Jack. Oh no, I'm sorry, he's not in All Things Jack. And then we have here's Johnny and uh, Johnny Carson. He's a boxer, ex-boxer. He's an ex-magician. He's a comedian, and also he's king of late night, so he fits several metrics. And we have the Stinger missile category. You know, this one I've done an entire video on, on how many missiles there are in this puzzle. Uh, so you have the Stinger. You have the USS Hornet and the Stinger. 
And also you have in um, the Phil Philadelphia Experiment movie, we see, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, the final countdown. The final countdown movie, we see the Chevy um, Stinger Corvair with the boxer engine. The only Chevy air-cooled boxer engine car they ever make is the Corvair. You know, this is the car they make. So in, in the final countdown, we see this car. You know, so this is what part of our boxer category. So we have the snow track. It has a VW boxer. The VW jack drives, the yellow one, has a boxer. The VW Red Beetle in King's Book has a boxer engine. The same exact 1200cc boxer engine. Literally, these are the three exact same engines in these vehicles. The snow track is VW 1200cc. The VW the jack drives, the VW in the book. Um, <clears throat> the Thiacal Sprite, which uh, Wendy escapes in, has a VW 1200cc engine in it. And then we see the 911 in uh, the Philadelphia Experiment, Dr. Porsche, it's a boxer engine as well. So there's a thread of boxer engine vehicles. <clears throat> um, then we have the Hornet, the F-18 Hornet. This is a, a thread of all the jet planes that are in the, you know, we have the B-52 from Strangelove, 52 cards in a deck. We have the Kitty Hawk CSM from Apollo. Um, this is the first airport where the first flight takes place. Theseus and the magic thread. You know, we're, we're weaving these magic threads. Um, and Kitty Hawk is Catbird. So Kubrick was in the Catbird seat. We see the red AMC Hornet and uh, the man with the golden gun. <clears throat> and we see it do the barrel roll over the river. And this was the first jump in a car that was simulated on a computer first. So in the movie you see the, the AMC Hornet do a barrel roll over a river, which is a, an amazing jump if you see the movie. And it was all um, simulated on a computer before they did it so they could figure out how to make the ramps. Then we have the Red Beetle toy in the bathroom with, in the Overlook. We have the Red Beetle in Stephen King's book with a two-wheel trailer. Kubrick admits the two-wheel trailer because he's drawing attention to Apollo's golden chariot. If you notice, Jack drives a yellow beetle, a gold bug. So then you have the yellow beetle, Jack's car, the two-wheel trailer is missing, and then we see the scene where, where Mr. Ullman says, is your luggage here yet? And he goes, oh yeah, and he points over this massive pile of luggage that there's no way would fit in a VW Beetle with three people in it. So, you know, he's drawing attention to the missing trailer again. Um, then we have the Beetle itself. So you have a dung beetle. A dung beetle pushes a large um, dung ball in front of it everywhere it goes, and it lays its eggs in the dung ball. This is an allegorical match with NASA. It pushes the ball everywhere it goes. And it lays eggs in it as it, you know, so it's laying these little, um, I don't know what you would call them, but little clues in, in the ball <laughs> that are going to hatch out at some point. They're going to thaw out like, uh, like Dr. Evil says, come on, people, shoot me the info. I've been frozen for 30 years. Well, this puzzle has been frozen just like Jack Nicholson in the maze for 30 years. So you got to throw me a bone. And so the dung beetle, and the beetle, it, it bores in the ground, it crawls, and it flies, just like NASA. You know, you have the NASA crawler, brings the rocket to the uh, launch pad, and then it flies, and then crashes into the ocean. Then we have Ant Hill in Paths of Glory, another Kubrick movie, and uh, they're defending the Ant Hill. Then we go to Dune with... Um, Lynch again, and they have the giant worms 
Now notice, it's not just a worm, it's a giant worm. So we had one small step, one giant leap. So now we have a giant worm. In Star Wars, Han Solo uh, is threatened by Jabba the Hutt, and he's told, he tells him that he's going to feed him to the worm, and he'll be digested over the next thousand years in the belly of the worm. And this is one of the millennium thousand grand clues. Um, but again, once again, it's a giant worm in Star Wars as well. Um, let's see here. White widowed male. So <clears throat> in the movie Lolita, Peter Sellers calls up Humbert Humbert and he says, uh, Mr. Humbert, we have you listed here as a white widowed male. So we're using palindromes and mirroring and flipping. So a white widowed male flip, flip would be a black widow spider female. And the black widow spider eats its mate after they copulate. Then we have the gold bug, purity of essence, Poe, um, peace on earth. This is all in Dr. Strangelove. This is Poe's book, The Gold Bug. So this is back up here where we were looking for the, the golden chariot, you know, because it's the gold bug. Then we have the NASA crawler. We're always using archetypes in the puzzle. So the NASA crawler, it turns out, is the largest four-track vehicle ever made. This is the thing that takes the space shuttle to the launch pad and the Saturn V to whatever, you know, whatever fireworks they're bringing out that day, because that's what they really are is fireworks. They shoot up in the air out over the ocean, probably 280, 300, 400 miles out, and then they crash in the ocean. But you never get to see that part because you're not supposed to. Um, you have the movie Dumb and Dumber, and he says, I got worms, and you know, he has a worm farm. Uh, here's the Star Wars. Han Solo is threatened. He's going to be fed to the worm and digested in the next thousand years in its belly, which makes no sense because you're not going to live a thousand years to digest you. Uh, then you have the movie Predator with Jesse Ventura. This is a county, by, by the way. And he's a wrestler. You know, that's one of our fucking categories. He's a pro wrestler, just like uh, Killer Karali. And Sam Shepard. And of course, he was the, uh, the governor, too. I know, what the hell was his nickname? Anyway, he was, he was a governor of Minnesota, I believe. And uh, so he was in the movie Predator. And in the movie The Predator, he's, he's shooting at one of the guys, and he says, uh, He's dug in like a Georgia tick. So we have the tick. Um, in Pulp Fiction, the guy says, uh, at Zed's, he says, the spider just caught a couple flies. Um, and Zed's dead. You know, these are the ball gags. And then you have Vincent from the Netherlands in uh, Pulp Fiction. And you have the gaff, gag gift ear from Van Gogh. And then you have the gag gift moon rock which turned out to be petrified wood which is one of our wood so if you want to connect wood to stone we're going to use the Netherlands petrified wood moon rock so this is a connector word this is a uh, connector to connect the monolithic category which would be all the stones Oliver Stone James Mason um, uh, the blue marble the jade rabbit the crazy diamond the Pink Panther Diamond, etc., etc. So there's our our stone category, petrified, and because it's not a piece of wood, it's petrified stone wood. So, and uh, the Netherlands is below sea level, which is another clue. It's a low, one of the lowest spots. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, he's the Coneheads. Uh, he's a comedian. He's in the Blues Brothers, which is another alchemical movie. And he has webbed feet. This is a very bizarre, strange anomaly. You know, it's not it's not something many people have. And there's pictures of his feet, and he's talked about that he has webbed feet. And of course, you know, he does the tang. He laughs about tang and the cone heads. Um, this is the death's head moth. Aldrin is a banned pesticide. So let's do this. Let's go to let's go to Google. 
Aldrin Band Pesticide. So, Aldrin is a organochlorine insecticide that was widely used into the 1990s when it was banned in most countries. Colorless, odorless salad. Oh, great. You wouldn't even taste it. Before the ban, it was heavily used as pesticides to treat seeds and soil. Hmm, isn't that nice? Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's hexochlorocyclopentadine. So this is where, you know, this is Aldrin, you know, hello. So his name, his first name is Buzz, and his last name is, or his, yeah, last name is Aldrin, a pesticide. Okay. So this would be related to, I guess you could say, Monsanto and, um, you know, Bayer and all the criminal companies that are poisoning us um, through eugenics. So what is Buzz's mil middle name? Eugene. So this is the whole Eugene's category. This is Eugene Kelly, King of the Dance, or King of the Musical. Um, Eugene Krantz, Eugene Cernan, um, Eugene Roddenberry. And uh, so there's, I've done a video on this already, all the Eugenes in the eugenics category. So he's uh, Edwin Buzz Eugene Aldrin. And of course, the Buzz part is the moonshine, you know, and the moonshots, and the moonshiners. And Kubrick was doing the moonlighting, you know. <laughs> so you got to love it. And uh, Tang has no bubbles. So it's missing the bubbles. But the good news is NASA found all the bubbles. And they're in all their space videos. They're filled with them. So if you need to see bu bubbles, um, just, you know, go to NASA. They can, f they can take care of all your needs. And uh, so we have Frisbee and Back to the Future. <clears throat> and that's it for insects. But that gives you an idea of it's not one, it's not two, it's not three. It's an ongoing, woven through um, theme of there'll be a hidden bug somewhere, or a buzz, or a flea, or a tick, or a wood tick, or a butterfly diorama, or fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee or the monarch butterfly, or queen of the bees, or the hornet. And that's it. And um, so that's a kind of a, a quick summary of all the insects and the stingers and the hornets and um, they're in the puzzle. And uh, the VW bug, you know, bugs bunny. You have the, here you have hornet and the uh, dwarf star and uh, Douglas fur needles you know so you get the idea and by the way we've got a lot of new subscribers uh, I had a subscriber the other day I'm not gonna name who it is but somebody subscribed and they have 11,000 subscribers on their site so I was like that that is a record for somebody who who uh, subbed to me so welcome aboard and uh, here's some of the projections you'll notice the Apple projection there there's the Hornet doing its barrel roll, the first computer simulated barrel roll. There's Jackie Gleason, the honeymooner, the great, great one. There's Jack Webb, one of the Jacks, a TV detective. Webb, you know, we're weaving. You know, and the Mickey Mouse Disney clues. And the Neptune under the sea dance. And the tracked sidewinders. There's the Sidewinder, you know, that's the path the Apollo Saturn rocket took on TV. You know, the Jackie Robinson projection. And all the projections, you know, there's the Peterson projection and the Mercator. There's the color clues, you know, the, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. This is the clue that we're going back in time and forward in time. And Margaret, she does a movie, The Swinger. She's queen of Vegas and she's not coming. You know, <laughs> this is, and he's part Indian, by the way. They, uh, you know, so there's Admiral Byrd discussing his polar expedition, you know, with the map right behind him. And that's it, guys. Have a good night. Carpe diem. Peace and love.